Hey everyone, this is Daniel, the Product Marketing Manager with Ansel, and I'm joined today by none other than our Master of Networking, uh, Savior of all the community members who need help and support, Mario Kak, who is our Lead Support Engineer and Linux Engineer. So, um, we have a brand new release uh, that's recently come out that basically makes it a lot easier and faster for you to access your antlets, i.e. your virtual servers, uh, once you create them from your local client device, or your laptop or your computer, without going into Antman. So before we dive into that, that's gonna come towards the end. Before we dive into that uh, and show you that new way that's really fast and easy, we're just gonna give you some context by going over the three main ways that you would typically access your antlets. Um, and just discuss those very briefly so you have some context and then we'll talk about this new release uh, release So Mario passing it over to you. What are the three? Uh, main ways that you would uh, typically access your antlets uh, just in brief and then we can cover each one in, in detail Yeah, so if you have a KVM antlet you would typically or you could use the VNC console within Antman uh, if it's a Linux antlet, you can SSH to it. So you would either uh, use the console within Antman and then SSH to the antlet's IP address, or you could do an SSH from another terminal to the Ansel and then SSH into the antlet. You could create a port forwarding rule to SSH directly to the antlet, or you could add a bridged NIC to an antlet. So then it can be addressed directly on the local LAN. And then you can connect to it via SSH or RDP or whatever you want to do. So what I'm hearing is, obviously depending on the kind of server you have, whether it's Linux or Windows, and whether it has a GUI or not, if it's command line only, but you can either access it from when you're within Antman, within that environment, because uh, at that point you're already within the subnet, right? So you can just access it directly. And then there's another way where you would access it remotely, either through first SSHing into the Ansel and getting into its internal subnet, and then going into the antlet, um, or I guess that would be the only one if you're SSHing. The third would be port forwarding rule. The fourth then would be creating a virtual NIC that's bridged to the uh, to the actual physical network inter uh, network interface card. Right. right to the local LAN. Okay, so how do we break this down in a simple way? Let's start with the double hop, hopping into the an Ansel first and then into the uh, antlet. Can you explain why we need to do that and just a little bit about how it's set up? Yeah, so by default, an antlet is uh, created on the 10.1.1 network, which is an internal NATed network. So it's not directly accessible from the local land that the Ansel's connected to. So what we can do, since the Ansel's operating system uh, does have basically a virtual NIC on that internal network, we can SSH to the Ansel's operating system, and then from there, SSH into the IP address of the antlet itself. So, Short of that, you would either have to set up a port forwarding rule because it is NAT, or you could add that virtual NIC or the bridge NIC in the antlet. So talk to me about why we would want to create a bridge NIC then. What does that do? Okay, so with the bridge NIC, then the antlet can be addressed directly on the local LAN. So it's just like plugging in another computer right into our LAN. No port forwarding, nothing blocking it, all ports are open. So you can install all, all your services and you can just connect directly to them. Okay. So, so it sounds to me that like the main difference between that and port forwarding would be with that, it has its own IP address and all its ports are potentially open or are open on your local network. Correct. Whereas with port forwarding, you're saying still we only have the Ansel's IP address, but you're just telling your Ansel saying, hey, when it's uh, you know reaching this port, forward it to this other port on the antlet within within the Ansel subnet. That's right. Okay, gotcha. So now that we understand how that all works, what is this new release and and what does it do? 
Okay, so basically what we're doing is when you create an antlet, it automatically creates a couple of port forwarding rules. One for SSH and one for RDP. So if you have a spin up a Windows antlet, you could use your own uh, RDP client to get directly to the antlet. And same thing for SSH. If you have an antlet that uh, supports SSH, any of the Linux flavors of Linux, then again, there is a port forwarding rule which will allow you to SSH directly to that antlet from another machine on the line. Gotcha. And I'm a total noob uh, to at least to all this stuff. So do, when you, let's say, create a Linux antlet, is there just some some uh, kind of protocol or something that's running and always listening to port, let's say 22, in case there's an SSH request, is that what it is? So then we just automatically forward? So typically, typically yes. And so typically in Linux, uh, SSH is typically open, not always, but uh, at least with all of our templates, it is open. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So can you show us how it's done? Sure. This is where it gets fun. Let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna walk through here then, right, is actually creating a new antlet and seeing what those port forwarding rules are that are created, explaining them, and then actually logging in from your client, you know, from your desktop, or using a desktop or laptop? I'm using a laptop. Okay, from your laptop and using your own SSH terminal. Um, so your own terminal to SSH directly into the antlet, correct? Yeah, so let's start out by creating a couple of antlets. So let's create a Windows 10 antlet. And let's just give this a little more RAM and a couple of CPUs. And then let's create a Linux antlet as well. Oops. CentOS. Okay. Okay, so now I've got my Windows 10 and my CentOS here. Perfect. So what we'll see now, so uh, all my existing antlets did not have port forwarding rules. So even though I just updated to the new version, uh, those port forwarding rules will not be in place for right. my existing antlets. But for my new antlets, if I go to port forwarding, here we can see that I have a, a rule for uh, SSH and for RDP. So 3389 is RDP, 22 is SSH. Now, the format that this takes is for RDP, we use 3000 plus the last number in the IP address of the antlet. And for SSH, it's 22,000 plus the last number. So if we go back to antlets here, we can see that my Windows 10 antlet ends in a 13, and my CentOS antlet ends in a 16. So when we come back here, we can see we've got 3313 for Windows will be the RDP. So this is something that the user can actually change, right? If they want to delete this port forwarding rule and set up a different one, they could do that. But this That's is just the, the default thing that we set up just to make it simple, right? Yeah, this is a default screen that we use. So okay. you can always turn them off. And of course, you can edit them here as well. Gotcha. And so okay. for both the Windows 10 and the CentOS Antlet, now obviously for the Windows 10, it wouldn't have SSH, but we just know that our antlets by default are either going to be listening on 22 or whichever one it was, 3810. So we just create that port forwarding rule then to automatically, sorry, 3389, automatically go there. So, so that basically, yeah, you can, you can just access it without having to set up or configure anything on your end, right? Right. So once that's up and, the, and those antlets are running, so for instance, for the... CentOS antlet. I can SSH directly to, let me, oh, that was 16. So I can say minus P for port number, and that's 22016. Then root at, and now I go to the IP address of the ant sole itself. So I'm using 1.4 and 
And if I go to my dashboard, you can see that my private IP address is 1.4. And so let me come back here. So that's, that's the Ansel's IP address. That yes. is the port on the IP that you want to get it to. And that's just then going to push you straight over into the Antlitz SSH. Correct. Okay. So the default password on this is Ansel. So in there you can see I'm in, now I'm in Antlet 16. Woo! That's this awesome. Is, this is the CentOS Antlet. Okay, now for RDP, uh, let me bring up my RDP client here. And my Windows 10 was 13, 10.13. So let me edit this one here and I'll just say 3013 for the port number on that. And I'll save that. So again, that's the Ansel's IP address followed by 3013, which is what we just set as that default port for it to listen in on. And then that's going to push it into the Windows Antlet. Correct. OK. So now if I select this one, and the username is Ansel, and password, default password is Ansel112. I will continue. Sweet. So there we go. So we've got our desktop. And where did my other stuff go? There we go. So, so yeah, so those are the rules there. Now, also, we could always, um, for a KVM antlet, like this Windows 10 antlet, we can always use the VNC console in here as well. But if you want to use an RDP client, which can give you, you know, better resolution, um, or maybe you just prefer doing it that way from, uh, without having to log into Ant-Man first. Um, that's a great method. So I have a question for you then. If obviously with this way, you can you create an antlet and basically you're ready to access it. Obviously you can always have access to directly, you know, like always from here, from the VNC console or from that, uh, the command line console there on the left. But it's also just accessible from your local area network via that port why would you create a bridge NIC? I mean, obviously there could be a ton of reasons, but just if you give me one or two reasons. Yeah, so sometimes you, uh, you might have a service that uses a lot of uh, ports, or maybe you just have a lot of services that you wanna access. So instead of having to always create the port forwarding rules for each one of those services, then you just, you can create a bridge NIC and all you have to do is hit that IP address and basically all the ports are open at that point on the local end. Okay. Does that mean though that this is a little safer then? Just curious. And we didn't actually plan to discuss this, but uh, is it a little safer just because then you still have that one IP address with just the specific ports that you've allowed? Yeah, I suppose it is. Um, but the thing is too, you know, the, the network that you have your ANSA plugged into, well, we're generally expecting that to be uh, secure as well. Right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's another, it's another hop. It's another uh, layer of NAT. Uh, yeah, so it, yeah, you, it is a little bit more secure. Okay, that's cool. It's good to know. All right, well, I think that was really helpful. Thanks, Mario. Okay, great. Well, everyone, thanks for watching and we will see you all next time. Take care. Okay.